This is Dr. Shulian from the NerveMD and the Neurology, Muscular Dystrophy and Neuropathy Institute. We're doing a series of videos on CIDP and in this video we're going to be discussing the tr different treatment options that are commonly used in CIDP. We won't discuss all of them but the more commonly used ones. Probably the oldest one and the easiest uh, treatment that exists uh, for CIDP uh, is an oral medication called uh, cord uh, corticosteroids. Uh, and the most common one, or one of the most common ones that is used, is uh, prednisone. Uh, the corticosteroids, uh, or the specific one, uh, prednisone, uh, are oral medication, which means that they are taken by mouth. Uh, they are very easy to take, they take, tend to be very powerful. Uh, the function of the prednisone, or the corticosteroids, is that they calm down the immune system. This, uh, once the immune system is calmed down, then it allows the nerves to regenerate. It really doesn't have any power to directly affect nerve degeneration. It just stops the attacks of, from uh, on the nerves, allowing the nerves to regenerate. It essentially just calms down the immune system. This is a very good medication because of the ease of use, uh, plus it is a very effective medication. However, in the long term, the medication has a lot of side effects. Patients that are on the prednisone or the corticosteroid class for long periods of time meaning uh, for months or years at high doses, could develop a lot of complications like weight gain, diabetes, the skin could become thin, there could be bruising, and it could uh, lead to weight gain and a lot of uh, other, other problems. An ideal patient for uh, corticosteroids or prednisone is a patient who we start on the cortisone and we expect to be able to lower the dose of the prednisone or the corticosteroids and for the patient and not to uh, relapse in their symptoms, meaning that we start with a moderate to a high dose of the corticosteroids and we gradually bring down uh, the dose. If the patient is able, uh, if the patient improves initially and as we bring it down the steroids and the patient doesn't get worse again or doesn't relapse and the patient is able to stay on a low dose of prednisone or the corticosteroids, then this is the ideal patient. If we find that the patient doesn't respond to the corticosteroids or the prednisone, or as we bring down the dose of it, then the patient starts to have relapses or recurrent uh, symptoms, and the patient requires a high dose uh, to be symptom-free or have reduced symptoms, then this is not a good candidate uh, for corticosteroids or prednisone, and at that point we have to try another method of treatment. Uh, there are two other uh, commonly used uh, treatment methods. One of them is uh, IVIG. This is an intravenous uh, medication, meaning that the medication is put into an IV bag and uh, with tubing, it is injected into the vein. The treatments could go anywhere from two to four hours, or in some patients, uh, more than that. It is a very powerful technique. It's probably one of the most powerful medications for CIDP. Uh, it has very minimal side effects. The common side effects include rash uh, and headaches. There could be uh, more side effects uh, rarely, uh, but usually uh, we don't see that. Uh, the disadvantage of this, this treatment is that it is time consuming. Because it is an intravenous uh, medication and it takes several hours to administer, it becomes very time consuming for the patients. But if there is uh, no other technique that is working, this could be a very good option because again it is very powerful with minimal side effects. The next uh, treatment option is plasmapheresis. This is also a very powerful technique. And there are studies that show that, is, uh, that uh, plasmapheresis and IDIG could be just as effective as each other. Uh, in plasmapheresis, the patient's uh, blood is taken out. Uh, the antibodies uh, in the uh, blood are uh, filtered out, and the bad proteins in the blood, uh, body are filtered out, and the blood is put back into the body. Uh, the, uh, this uh, reduces the immune system temporarily. Uh, uh, by the time the immune system uh, rebuilds uh, these proteins, the body has a chance to regenerate the nerves, and uh, there will be some uh, regeneration of the nerves. But then the process has to be repeated just like any other medication, uh, sometimes twice a week, sometimes less, sometimes more. Uh, the disadvantage of this process is that it is not the readily available in every locality and it usually has to be done at a hospital setting as uh, the blood uh, is taken out of the body and put back in, which is a little bit more complex than your usual treatment and it requires very expensive uh, machinery uh, to be able uh, to do it. There are other treatments options that are available. There are other oral treatments uh, that are in, uh, that calm down the immune system 
or are immunosuppressive, like Salsat, Imiran, and uh, there is a whole other category of treatments. Uh, these are also used at times. Uh, these have their own problems. Uh, they're easy to take, but uh, they tend to have a lot of side effects. Uh, the side effects tend to be less than those of prednisone, but the problem uh, with them is that it takes a long time for them to start working, sometimes months up to a year for some of them. And uh, in CIDP, they don't tend to be as effective as uh, the other treatments that were mentioned uh, in this uh, video. Uh, we also have other more powerful techniques which uh, we uh, don't use as often. Uh, we use those in patients that don't respond. Uh, we, those are also mostly IV uh, type uh, medications where the medication is uh, infused uh, through the vein with uh, minimal side effects most often. But in most patients, we don't uh, need to, to use uh, those uh, medications. Uh, with most patients with CIDP, we are able to, to help them and the uh, majority of them have reduced symptoms and uh, they do uh, much better. Uh, in patients that have, uh, we, have uh, we see several classes of patients. Some of them have only mild symptoms. For many years, they only have numbness or tingling in the toes. It never gets worse. In those uh, patients, uh, they may not need treatment at all. Or maybe we'll just use medications uh, that, uh, that are for pain if the pain gets more intense. There are patients who have much more aggressive type of a disease uh, where they could uh, lead to severe paralysis or severe pain and these patients could be on narcotics or heavy medications to calm down the pain. Uh, they might become uh, dependent on crutches or uh, on a wheelchair. In these patients we will uh, get uh, more aggressive and use uh, more powerful treatments like IVIG, plasmopheresis or other treatment options uh, if needed. In the majority of the patients, especially if we start at the beginning of the problem, they tend to do very well and make a very good uh, recovery. Thank you for listening to us. For more information, please visit our website at nervemd.org. Thank you.